Welcome. This lecture will explain the processes leading to seismicity within the Groningen gas fields. Earthquakes occur frequently in, on the Earth. Earth. Earthquake magnitudes vary enormously in size from very small earthquakes that are not even felt by humans till sometimes very large earthquakes that cause a lot of damage and destruction. So how does an earthquake actually happen? It is the consequence of gradual buildup of stress within the Earth's crust. And when the buildup of a stress has become larger than the strength of the rock, a sudden movement of two adjacent blocks occur. They slip past one another. And the surface where they slip is called the fault plane, and the location be below the Earth's surface where the earthquake starts is called the hypocenter, and the location directly above it on the surface of the Earth is called the epicenter. The majority of the earthquakes on Earth are natural earthquakes that are generated by high stress buildup due to tectonic proce processes. Examples of tectonic earthquakes are the earthquakes in Japan, Turkey, Italy, Nepal, or the 1992 earthquake in Roermond in the Netherlands. In contrast to natural earthquakes, human activities within the subsurface can also alter the stress conditions in the Earth to such an extent that earthquakes occur. These man-made earthquakes are also known as induced earthquakes or induced seismicity. And induced seismicity can occur due to various causes. Where human activities in the subsurface occur in the vicinity of, ge of geologically active faults that are stressed naturally by tectonic processes, the human activities can trigger an earthquake. Examples of such events are the Basel seismic event in Switzerland or the Blackpool event in the UK. The magnitude of such an event is in principle determined by the natural tectonic processes. Only the timing of the event is determined by the human activities. An earthquake can also be induced by human activities in areas where there is little or no stress built up by tectonic processes and no natural earthquakes would occur. The human activities in the subsurface are then the cause of the occurring seismicity. For example, during hydraulic fracturing, during wastewater injection in porous reservoirs or during mining activities. Also induced seismicity can occur during oil and gas production and subsequent compaction, such as in the Groningen gas field. Gas was discovered in the Groningen field in the 1950s and after decades of gas extraction, seismicity started to, to occur. This seismicity is due to a decrease in the gas pressure in the reservoir. And the reduction in gas pressure has led to compaction within the reservoir, which in turn has caused the pre-existing faults and fractures to occasionally move. And the largest earthquake recorded in the Groningen gas field so far was in August of 2012 in Huizingen with a moment magnitude of 3.6. And because of the continuous increase in compaction within the Groningen gas fields, more and more seismic events have been recorded over time. But what is actually is compaction? The Groningen gas field, the Groningen gas reservoir lies within in a sandstone rock about 3 kilometers below ground level. And the sandstone has a porosity of about 20%, which means that in between the sand grains, around 20% of the volume is empty space. And these empty spaces are called pores and they are filled with gas. And we can visualize what happens below Groningen with an experiment consisting of a sponge, some water and a weight. And the sponge then represents the sandstone, the water represents the gas and the weight is the three kilometers of rock above the reservoir. And when the weight is placed on the sponge, it makes the sponge thinner or it compacts it. And since the pores of the sponge are still filled with water, the water in the sponge resists some of the load. And if we now start extracting gas, in other words, remove the water from the, from the sponge, the water pressure reduces and the water pushes back less strongly than before. And this, this results in an additional compaction of the reservoir and the reservoir layer becomes even thinner. And in Groningen, this gas production related compaction is estimated to be around 40 centimeters. And compaction depends on at least four parameters. And firstly, it is the rock compressibility, which is material dependent. And secondly, it's the porosity of the rock. 
the more porous the rock, the more likely it is for compaction to occur. And thirdly, it's the thickness of the layer. The thicker the layer, the more reduction in reservoir thickness can occur. And at last, the gas pressure reduction in the reservoir. The greater the reduction in pressure is, the more compaction can be expected. However, compaction alone does not necessarily cause seismicity. So why does seismicity occur in Groningen? If the compaction is the same across the whole reservoir, the reservoir becomes equally, equally thin everywhere, which in itself should not lead to any seismicity. Seismicity occurs because of differential compaction within the reservoir. For example, a different amount of compaction on one side of a fault with respect to the other side. And this leads to different amounts of displacement along the fault and a buildup of, of stress or tension at that location. The compaction related stress change becomes larger and larger until, until it is higher than the rock strength and a movement occurs. So it is differential compaction across a fault that can lead to seismicity. In this lecture we have discussed induced earthquakes and how compaction due to gas production causes earthquakes. And in the next lecture we'll explain how the energy of an earthquake propagates to the surface of the earth.